Colonel Kurtz, will you please get... No, 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 w Walter, seriously? No. Oh. So-called because he is a complete and total Section 8. Hello, folks, and welcome back to the Electronics Lab for your next semi-exciting update on the Tesla project. Now, before we get stuck in though, I do, have an, an, I do have an important announcement for you. It seems as if Mr. Google has now flagged my website of evbmw.com as containing prohibited content. It seems that I am promoting hacking, cracking or circumvention of copyright controls or whatever they want to call it. So, whatever you do, do not visit evbmw.com, okay? Seriously, don't go there. You could learn something, buy something. No, don't do any of that. Right, let's get to it. So, it has been a while since we have had some nice uh, Tesla hardware on the bench for us to hack. Uh, as some of you may know from previous videos, I've been going back and forth now with a few people um, about trying to come up with a deal for a Model 3 drive unit. And I still got some ongoings there. But most of the offers that I've had, I've had to reject uh, just because they don't. We, we, we just couldn't come to an agree, agreement uh, around the open source nature uh, that I like to work with. So, what we do have on the bench for you today is hopefully the next best thing. We have ourselves a Model 3 power conversion system. Now, I'll give you a little tour of it in a minute, but just briefly, what that is, is it is a combination of a charger and a DC-DC converter in one unit. And you will be able to see by it that there has been a lot done from a cost reduction point of view ease of manufacture and stuff like that as you would expect them to be doing for the Model 3. So, our goal for this, I suppose it'll be several episodes, is going to be to work out a mechanism that's going to allow us to control the DC-DC converter and the charger so that we can use these Model 3 PCS uh, modules as they are called in our own EV conversion project. So enough about me and complaining about the wonders of Google. Let's go take a quick look at the externals and then we will get straight in here and start looking at figuring out some of the wi wiring. So let's do it. Let's see if Gimbal Musk wants to uh, work with me today. So this is it. Uh, Model 3 power conversion system. Now I did get, um, I was very lucky to get uh, some of the high voltage and signal wiring um, harness for this. So that's going to make li life significantly easier for us. I also got this black plastic unit here, uh, which according to this label is the HV system controller and we will be having a closer look at that later but for now uh, the power conversion system itself is this kind of a stamped aluminium cover and there is a, what I believe is a steel base uh, here so there's just I believe there were six screws in it. Um, up here, come on, gimbal. 
up here, uh, we have a high voltage connector with four pins in it. This is our AC mains input from the, char the charging port. Uh, over here, we have a two pin connector. This is our high voltage DC battery. There's a multi pin connector in here, which is our signals, and a big two pin connector here, which is where our 12 volt uh, DC DC converter output would originate from. Uh, at the ends, then I've just got these guys plugged with a bit of rag. We've got a cooling port at this end, and on the diagonal opposite, uh, we've got another cooling port here. So I've already pulled out the uh, screws and broken the warranty seal. Sorry, Mr. Musk. Let's go ahead and pop this guy off. And we'll get you a look inside. Now, there have been a few videos out on the internet of the insides of this and several other pieces of Model 3 hardware. So I'm not going to spend, you know, too long describing it. We'll be getting into the nitty gritty, unlike uh, some of those videos. Um, but as you can see, straight away, I suppose the biggie is that everything is on the one PCB here. Um, so previous chargers, as you know, there were several power modules and control boards and stuff like that, like in the Model S and Model X, Gen 2 and Gen 3 chargers. Uh, whereas here, it's two PCBs. We have a, it looks like some kind of a mains input PCB here. We have our main charger section here, DC-DC converter section here, and looks like up in this corner, this is the brains of the operation. So, uh, we're going to get stuck in straight away, guys, and uh, see what we can make happen here. So, the gentleman who donated this uh, module to me was very, very kind. He has included um, the connector for the mains. Uh, what you will not will notice here is that the mains connector has two wires when there's a possibility of uh, four. The reason for that being this is a, U a US spec uh, charger. So it will have been designed to run on 240 volts, 60 hertz uh, power. Oh, uh, whereas in Europe we would have three phase and neutral in there. Uh, we also got the high voltage battery connector here, which goes into this socket. And we got the wiring harness, which I'm going to show you next. So this is our main harness plug. Uh, there are a total of nine wires uh, connecting to it. Now, the thing that was not immediately obvious to me uh, with the Model 3 stuff is that what they have done for their signal wiring is they've made them all the same color but they have printed the identifiers on the wiring on the cables themselves again clearly a cost reduction exercise so they can keep all the same color of wire um, so these identifiers match up to the Model 3 wiring diagram. So that's really good because we know what signal does what uh, coming in here. Now, it's quite a lengthy harness. Um, this big plug here and quite a few of the smaller ones do plug into the uh, HV controller. Um, but what we're going to do right now is um, I'm going to strip out the harness down so that I have the wires from this plug to this big one here which would normally go into the HV controller and we're going to put some power to this guy and start seeing if anything wakes up in here if we can get some CAN messages coming out or what some of these signals do 
Alrighty folks, let me bring you up to speed on what we got going on here. So, we have been carrying out a few experiments uh, to find out how to wake this baby up. So, what I've done so far is I have taken the high voltage controller out of its plastic box, which was a real tour de force because this vehicle interface connector here was basically uh, molded into the enclosure so I had to go ahead and heat the hell out of that to get it to come out but we got this guy out this guy powers up just from 12 volts and then provides us a 5 volts isolated supply which goes down to our power conversion system now that isolated supply is, from what I can tell, responsible for powering up one side of U22, which is a four channel uh, digital isolator. Um, I've identified a few of the devices here. Uh, they will be on the thread on the Open Inverter Forum. Now, we've got two communication buses from the high voltage controller to the charger. One of them looks like can on the scope and one of them most certainly does not. Uh, there is nothing awake here as yet on the actual uh, PCS charger or DC DC system. All I've got is uh, the high voltage controller awake, it's sending messages um, but so far, the actual power conversion system itself has not uh, woken up for me. Now, I disassembled some of the bus bars around the DC-DC converter area. And there's a device in here and a little uh, coil that seems to be uh, the basis of a book converter. So what I had thought was, ah, okay, it's probably using the 12 volts from the battery here uh, to provide its 12 volt supply to some of perhaps these uh, transformers here to make some of the low voltage supplies that are needed. Now that, from what I can see, doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, so the only other power source that it could possibly have uh, would be the high voltage battery uh, so that may or may not be um, what we are looking for so definitely been a very interesting first day here because it's nowhere like any of the model s stuff um, you can also tell here that the pcb is extremely thick uh, there will be multiple layers in this. Um, it would need to be thick too because otherwise they'd have serious reflow problems. Or not reflow problems, but they would have problems reflowing a board of this size um, if it was normal thickness. Um, so okay, I'm going to poke around another bit here to see if we can make some sense out of it. Um, I will, let's say I'll put a link in the description to the forum thread, so if you guys want to go over there and have a look, you'll see a bit more detail on it. Uh, we've also got a GitHub repo for this guy up too, so I'll throw up anything that I can find. Um, but in the meantime, I'm just going to crack on, kind of poking around here, um, and see if we can find out where... You know where even the dc dc converter gets its power from now what i have identified is there's two of these guys here which are basically half bridge dri drivers there's some more digital isolators here there's quite a lot of digital isolators nearly all of the devices around this part of the card are one form of isolator or another um so yeah, that's uh, that's what we got so far. But uh, definitely going to be an interesting, uh, interesting challenge for us.
Alrighty, folks. Uh, so, situation is, we have tried a few more things. Uh, number one was we applied some high voltage DC to our battery connections. And we actually got the DC DC converter to give a little tweak um, on startup, but it wouldn't uh, continue to run. Now, as it turns out, Muggins here had screwed up. And you will see that we have removed a component. Yes. We have removed U22 because I am a Muppet. See, the way this charger works is the high voltage controller supplies what it calls ISO VCC to the board. Moron here thought, hmm, ISO VCC, that must be 12 volts. It wasn't. It's 5 volts. Good news is the only place that ISO VCC goes is to U22, which is a four channel digital isolator. And uh, one of its purposes is, is to isolate the PCS enable and the DC DC enable signals. Of course, I had blown it. So its power rails were blown short and the channels were all blown to ground, so not good. So, pulled it off the board there, and that room removed the short from my, um, from my, uh, this gimbal is driving me crazy, from my ISO VCC. Uh, good news is, it's an easy to get part. Um, let me give you guys the part number here. Uh, it is an ISO 7741, so it's only about a fiver from Farnell. So I'm going to go ahead and grab one of those, and hopefully then, once we get that fitted back in there, uh, we should be in a position to at least wake up the DC-DC converter. Now, interestingly, it does look as if they derive the low voltage supplies from the high voltage battery, so way different to what we were used to so that is about it uh for our pcs for this episode folks uh we will be back once we replace good old u22 um and uh yeah hopefully we're you know we're st we're starting to learn how this thing works uh it was never going to be a one day pro project more like a month long project um but it's really great to have some model tree stuff here on the bench to work with so i'll leave you all there check links in the description as i say i'll put a link to the github and the open inverter where i'll have photos and more info about what i'm doing here um we will see you in the next episode don't forget to dislike, unshare, and for God's sake, don't subscribe. And until then, happy digital isolator replacement. Has no moral or legal responsibility. And Martin Sheen is going to have to be sent to terminate the Colonel's command.